Here are lessons that we can all learn from Iron Mike Tyson. Number five, stick up for yourself. Believe it or not, Mike Tyson actually wasn't exactly born with the greatest genetics, as he was a little fat kid when he was very young. He was tipping the scales at nearly 200 pounds as a 10-year-old, and to make things even worse, Tyson wore glasses. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. He also had a high-pitched voice and spoke with a lisp. Could things have been any worse? Tyson's family lived in Brooklyn in Brownsville, a section that was known as a high-crime neighborhood. I'm sure you can imagine it wasn't exactly fun and games when Tyson was growing up as he was picked on and robbed all the time. However, one day things done changed, to quote Biggie. Tyson's very first fight was with an older and bigger kid named Gary. Gary had grabbed and held one of Tyson's pet pigeons hostage. Tyson told him to give his pigeon back, and Gary pulled the head off Tyson's pigeon and threw it at Tyson. That's just insane. And that's when the switch flipped in Tyson. Tyson said that he had always been too scared to fight anyone before. He said, F and started swinging on Gary, which completely shocked Tyson's friends, even though they themselves were urging Tyson to fight. And Tyson didn't know what he was doing, but according to him, he threw some wild punches, one connected, and dude went down. And Tyson said he started skipping because, quote, it just seemed like the fly thing to do. He had practically the whole block watching his glory and everybody started cheering for Tyson. And Tyson said that it was an incredible feeling even though his heart was beating out of his chest. According to Tyson, he started getting a whole new level of respect around his neighborhood. Tyson started fighting a lot. Guys would bet money on Tyson and Tyson bet on himself too, which earned Tyson quite a reputation around Brooklyn. Tyson began having a reputation that he would fight anyone, anytime, even grown men. He decided to start getting revenge for the beatings he had taken from bullies. He'd be walking with some friends and he might see one of the guys who had beat him up and bullied him in years earlier. He would go as far as dragging dudes out of a store and start pummeling their ass. Now, I'm not telling you guys to go start Fight Club around you, that's not what I'm saying at all. But what we can learn from Iron Mike is that although you don't need to pick every fight, you also can't back down from every fight either, whether it's literally or figuratively. You have to stick up for yourself from time to time, or else you'll always be chosen as a weak target. To finish this early story on Tyson, ever since he had a taste of power, he started getting into trouble for the wrong reasons. By the age of 13, he had been arrested 38 times. He ended up at the Tryon School for Boys in Johnstown, New York. Tyson's boxing ability was discovered there by Bobby Stewart, a juvenile detention center counselor and former boxer. Stewart trained him for a few months before eventually introducing him to the legendary trainer, Custom Auto. Number four, don't buy into your own hype. Buster Douglas was the number seven ranked heavyweight boxer by the ring back in 1990. Certainly no slouch, but not exactly a boxer with a feared reputation or impressive pedigree. Leading up to the title fight with Tyson back in 1990, he had a string of six straight wins which earned him the shot against Tyson for a few heavyweight title belts. To put things in perspective, Tyson at the time was pretty much the baddest dude on the planet. He was considered pound for pound best boxer in the world, which is a rarity for a heavyweight. Iron Mike was undefeated at the time, and he had never been taken beyond the fifth round in his 37 previous professional fights. Douglas was basically never taken seriously, as he was just considered a tune-up for Tyson before an eventual meeting with Evander Holyfield. No Vegas sportsbooks would even take bets for the fight, except for the Mirage, who put Douglas at a 42-1 to underdog. I'm sure you guys already know what happened next. It's one of the most epic upsets in sports history. Buster Douglas knocked out Tyson and shattered his mystique of being the baddest dude on the planet. Buster Douglas was dealing with the recent death of his mother, a kidney ailment to his baby mama, and just for good measure, he also had the flu. Before the fight, a reporter asked Tyson if there was any chance Douglas could beat him. Tyson replied quite hilariously, perhaps if I chopped off my arms. However, Tyson had a few things that were going against him at the time. His relationship with ex-wife Robin Givens was falling apart. He was having financial battles with his manager Bill Caton and his promoter Don King. 
He had also fired his longtime trainer Kevin Rooney, who helped Tyson develop his signature peekaboo fighting style. Because of all that was going on in his personal life, Tyson didn't take his opponent nor his training seriously. He bought into his own hype and thought that his reputation, name, and talent could win the fight. Instead, Buster Douglas didn't buy into Tyson's hype, believed that he himself could beat him, and put in the work to shock the world. Years later, Tyson admitted his training regimen and mental preparation were simply lacking in the weeks leading up to the fight. If Tyson had properly prepared for the fight and was actually focused, the fight wouldn't have ended the way it did. But because nothing in life is ever guaranteed until it's in the past, this is why fights are still fought no matter what the odds. The ability to humbly confess to defeat without making ridiculous excuses is rare, not only in the boxing world, but just in general. This is clearly an attitude that illustrates Tyson's persona well, as he's the type to speak what he believes to be the truth. Number 3. Be self-aware. Speaking of persona, how many different personas have we seen of Mike Tyson? He's gone from being the bullied, to the bully, to a criminal, to a heavyweight champ, to a guy getting laughs in movies and late night TV. The bad press Tyson used to receive only painted just one side of him. The sports media loved to put the mic in front of Tyson and watch the chaos ensue. And in the same way, Tyson had trouble refusing any camera. He once admitted that he comes across as crass, a Neanderthal, and a babbling idiot at times. But Tyson would later admit and say that he likes to show that person to the public. He knows what his persona is and how he comes across, and he's not ashamed to show that side of himself. Tyson knows that he isn't without faults, and he'd rather give the world the truth than tell cheesy lies. However, a lot of people aren't self-aware and don't realize the persona they give off. When they act a certain way to expect a certain reaction, but instead receive another, they wonder why there's a disconnect. Iron Mike, on the other hand, knows exactly how he wants to be perceived and is okay with his imperfections. In his book, Undisputed Truth, Tyson said that a lot of people assume that Ali was his favorite boxer, but instead it was actually Roberto Duran. Tyson always looked at Ali as being handsome and articulate, and Tyson saw himself as short and ugly with a speech impediment. When he watched Duran fight, he realized he was just a street guy, just like him. Duran would supposedly say ridiculous things to his opponents, such as, quote, Suck my f you mother f Next time you're going to the f morgue. Tyson thought Duran was exactly like him, and he wanted to do what he did. Duran wasn't ashamed of being who he was, and Tyson related to him as a human being. As Tyson's boxing career went on, people started praising Tyson for being a savage. And Tyson knew that being called an animal was the highest praise he could get from someone because that's exactly what he wanted to be. People go to NASCAR races to see a big crash, and people go to boxing matches to see two guys beat the living hell out of each other. This isn't exactly news, but when Mike Tyson enters the ring and gives the people what they want, that's how Tyson planned it out. Tyson says that he knows his role and he's okay with the millions of people who see him in the ring and hate his guts because of his crazy quotes. Number two, keep what you earn. This is a lesson a lot of athletes can teach us. When anyone first makes any serious money of their own, they're gonna spend some money because they're feeling rich. However, some people think that that cash flow is forever and spend it like it's gonna come in forever. Unfortunately, Iron Mike was one of the many athletes that had to learn the hard way about money. When the millions started rolling in, it rolled out just as fast. Stories about his spending are just legendary. Tyson at one time employed as many as 200 people, including bodyguards, chauffeurs, chefs, and gardeners. Some of his less frugal moments include spending nearly $4.5 million on cars and motorcycles, $3.4 million on clothes and jewelry, and $7.8 million on personal expenses. When Tyson married his first wife, Robin Givens, he decided to show his love in the form of a $2 million bathtub he bought her for Christmas one year. According to documents from one of Tyson's divorces, he used to have a $400,000 a month lifestyle. That's just the recurring expenses, not counting the random stuff he bought. The list is endless, but you get the picture. Tyson certainly wasn't cheap, and he definitely didn't want to have to think about money. 
But unfortunately, even if you make hundreds of millions of dollars, you can easily spend that amount if you put your mind to it. Tyson made an insane amount of money. He made over $400 million in his life, but he managed to spend it all and then some. He ended up filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, having a debt of $23 million back in 2003. While on the talk show The View in early May 2010, Tyson revealed that he was forced to live paycheck to paycheck. He went on to say that he's totally broke, but that he still thinks that he has an awesome life and an awesome wife who cares about him, even if he was totally broke. He admitted that he had a lot of fun with his money and that going broke sort of just happened. That's the thing. Even though it just happened to Tyson, really, it didn't just happen. Going broke is a direct result of reckless spending and no planning. No matter what kind of cash flow you have, you're only able to keep what you earn when you have a lifestyle to match it accordingly. Number one, have a mentor. No matter what it is, it always helps to find someone to bring the best out of you. Tyson met legendary boxing trainer Customato back in March of 1980 and his life was forever changed. Customato watched Tyson spar just a few rounds with former professional boxer Bobby Stewart, as I had mentioned earlier. Cus saw the raw talent and potential in Tyson and said to him, quote, If you listen to me, I can make you the youngest heavyweight champion of all time. Tyson realized years later how weak he was as a little kid and quickly realized that D'Amato's strategy was psychology. Tyson said he realized how weak he was, and once he was given a little strength, he was addicted. Tyson started going out to Cus's house every weekend, but when he first started going, he wasn't even allowed to box. The first thing Cus told Tyson about was fear and how to overcome it. Cus described fear as the greatest obstacle to learning, but fear was Tyson's best friend. Fear is like fire. If Tyson learned to control it, it would work for him. If Tyson didn't learn to control it, it would destroy him and everything around him. The motto also described the difference between a hero and a coward to Tyson. He said, there wasn't a difference in what each of them felt, but what they do is what makes them different. He told Tyson that he had to have the discipline to do what a hero does and to keep himself from doing what the coward does. Tyson was only 14, but Tyson took to Customato's mentorship and was a true believer in Cus's philosophy. Tyson said he was always training and thinking like a Roman gladiator. He likened it to being in a perpetual state of war in his mind, yet on the outside seeming calm and relaxed. At the time that Tyson met Costumato, he was still an undisciplined kid who had no clue the potential that he had. But all it took was the right person with the right type of mentorship to cultivate Tyson's raw talent and become the best in the world. Here's what's next. Mayweather has broken countless records. He makes sure that he makes all of his statistics and records an integral part of his personal brand. This way, he gets to increase his leverage in negotiations about fees and other demands. But the undefeated label is just the top layer of that huge money bag. 